No tako, drage dame in cenjeni gospodje, pa smo spet nazaj po kosilu. Želoci so polni, upam, da niste preveč zaspani. Namreč smo prišli do tretjega dela današnje konference, današnjega Dneva inovativnosti Adria 2020. In ta zadnji del vsebinskega dela, ki bo trajal tja nekje do tretje ure, več ne, bo posvečen inovativnim start-up rešitvam. Bo zelo dinamičen, zelo zanimiv. Najprej pa boste slišali predstavitvi dveh slovenskih rešitev. Na to bo sledil tekmovalni del spiči petih slovenskih in tujih start-upov, ki se bodo potekovali za tri glavne denarne nagrade. No, po pičih se bo med predstavitvijo zanimivega, se bo zgodila predstavitev zelo zanimivega srednješolskega projekta, med to predstavitvijo se bo se stala komisija, ki bo samo pičanje ocenjevala in odločila tudi zmagovalce. Na to pa bomo zaključili skratko zanimivo diskusijo s člani komisije, Preverili bomo, kdo je bil dober, kdo morda ni bil tako dober, kdo bi lahko še kaj izboljšal in na koncu razglasili, kdo so tisti trije zmagovalci, ki bodo odšli domov bogatejši za 1600 in 400 evrov. No, začenjamo pa s predstavitvijo izkušnje iz vključitve v podporni program EIT Raw Materials Accelerator. Ta je bil danes že izpostavljen v prvem vsebinskem delu konference. Iz prve roke jo bo z nami delil Janez Trilobit iz podjetja Trilobit DOO, ki se okvarja s področjem strojnega vida za kontrolo procesov in izdelkov. Gospod Trilobit, predajam vam besedo. Hvala. Hvala vse. Hvala vse. Hvala vse. All right. My name is Janis, and I am a co-founder of a company named Trilobit. At Trilobit, we are solving challenges and providing solutions for our customers based on our knowledge and experience with computer vision. Computer vision is all about cameras, uh, all about robots, lasers, lights, computers, and of course, people who benefit from using all that technology. We measure, we detect, we identify and we control objects using machine vision, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and connecting whole systems to the cloud, some sort of internet of things. Our main customers are large industrial companies from automotive, metal, wood, and health industries who produce a lot of the same products every day. They used to have people checking each and every product using their hands and eyes. And you can imagine how terrible that job is and how many mistakes were made. Because after all, we're just humans. We, we make mistakes all the time. At Thrillbit, we believe these jobs are not meant for people, but rather for robots, computers, and cameras. They, they don't make mistakes. They don't need a break. They work 25 hours a day. 365 days a year, and while saying this, I only hope that the machines are not feeling bad about it, because if they are, and if we really develop the real artificial intelligence, we humans are in a lot of trouble. Uh, I'm not sure that anyone is uh, showing my presentation. Uh, let me just share the screen. Okay. Uh, I'm show, showing one example from the quality control program where the required accuracy is five micrometers for one dimensional uh, measurement. I don't know if you can imagine one micrometer, but let me explain it to you using uh, a very engineering example. Uh, my wife and I had a baby last month, and you know that uh, there's lots of cleaning of the poop, and you sometimes get that poop on your hand. When you finish cleaning the baby, normally you wash your hands at the end, and you, you can smell it still. So you go and wash again, this time using lots of more soap. Uh, you use brush, and you make sure that you go between the fingers under the nails, and 
then you smell it and it's good. An hour later, when you are reading the book and you are casually scratching your nose, you can smell it again. And that's, that's a micrometer right there. One of the most interesting projects we're doing right now is measuring vehicles before they are being loaded onto the trains at Eurotunnel. Eurotunnel is the underwater tunnel between France and the United Kingdom. We're providing them a very accurate system for measuring all dimensions of vehicles so they can play Tetris while they load uh, the, the vehicles on the train wagons. By Tetris, I mean they really make sure they use every inch of space uh, and try to load as many vehicles as possible on, on the wagon. This is this is how the this is how the the system looks like in real life. Here I'd like to show you some other pictures of our quality control systems. Maybe this one is the most accurate in showing showing how we do it. Uh, we're seeing an example where the robot picks up pieces, products from the conveyor belt, puts in puts the pieces under our surveillance, and when we check the the piece if it's good or not, we tell the robot on which belt to put it. It's either good or bad. The reason we were invited to to have a presentation here is is another project. Uh, one day a gentleman came to us with a challenge of separating non-ferrous metal. It's a, it's a waste metal and they're recycling it. Non-ferrous metals are the ones that are not uh, connecting or reacting to magnets too well, like copper and aluminum. We developed a prototype and we set up the business plan. The main value, value of our system is that we separate a mix of non-ferrous metal waste, each into their own box in just one single cycle. This way, our customer gets reduced separation costs. They reduce the transportation costs because they're doing it on their own. And they increase their profit by selling the same recycled metal for a higher price because the purity, the end purity is very high. The technology was working in our laboratory. So our next big step was running a pilot project in real environment to really test the, the system. We started, we started planning on how to expand outside Slovenia and go global. This is where we connected with EIT raw materials and joined the accelerator program. We were assigned to coaches and they led us through a series of meetings and workshops, pushing us in the right direction. Sadly, we were unable to attract a lot of interest, even though we interviewed more than 40 different waste manage management companies in our part of the world, uh, which is telling us that our technology may not be the next gold mine, and it's, it's not a scalable business as we thought it was. While I, post I personally still believe that it has potential since we are uh, starting to work with, with one customer already. I have now looked back at all the mistakes uh, that we made when, uh, when trying to get uh, this business going uh, at a large scale. And I would like to share those mistakes with you. The first one is that you should interview the market before you waste time and money on developing a solution first. This is what we did, and it just takes a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of time, and you might not get anything out of it. Because nobody is buying the thing they don't need, no matter how much you like it. Even if you developed uh, an aspirin right now, if nobody's head is hurting, they're just not going to buy it. The second thing is that you try and get commitment from a customer. Words are very cheap and we learned this the hard way. If, if the customer really wants your solution, your technology, 
let them prove it to you by by sacrificing something just a little bit of money a little bit of time a little bit of something they value this is showing that they really want to have your solution the third thing is to to listen to your customers very well and also listen to your coaches or the people who who went through through some business experience already they're here to help you even though you think your your case or your business is unique i'm almost sure you need to go through almost the same procedures as everyone else to to make your company successful the fourth suggestion uh, would be that you should join as many meetings as many business gatherings and as many business organizations as you can as much as your time allows you you never know when you're meeting the right person who might uh, change your life forever for the better and the last one if you want to become success successful and rich you need to solve people's problems people will pay you if you increase their health people will pay you if you increase their wealth people will pay you if you increase their status everyone wants to feel important and lastly people pay for sex i'm not sure how to connect raw materials and sex but i'm sure if you can find a way you're going to be very successful thank you very much are there some questions maybe Janez, najlepša hvala za tole predstavitev in še enkrat več je bilo danes izpostavljeno, kako pomembno je, da govoriš stranko, razumeš stranko in da rešuješ njene probleme, njene izzive, njene bolečine. No, naslednje predavanje, ki bo sledilo temu predstavitev, pa boste prevzela dr. Matija Gatalo in Tomaš Bizjak, ki boste predstavila inovativno rešitev na področju katalizatorjev za vodikove gorivne celice. Z rešitvijo Recatalyst so vključeni v program Jumpstarter, kjer pa so se uvrstili v veliki finale tega programa, ki bo potekal prav jutri, torej 25. novembra 2020. Matija in Tomaš, predajam besedo, pa slišimo, kaj pripravljate oziroma kaj imate pripravljeno. We are Tomaš and Matija, Team Recatalyst, and we revolutionize the way we make catalysts for hydrogen fuel cells. Recatalyst sources raw materials such as platinum, nickel and cobalt and converts them into added value products such as the catalyst for hydrogen fuel cells. Our product is the most crucial component of this green technology and we sell it to the fuel cell component manufacturers while the end users, the automotive companies, are creating the demand. The deal size governs the revenue per one gram of the catalyst. Today we are right at the tipping point. The total fuel cell market is expected to experience significant growth by 2026, reaching the value of about 40 billion euros. Our entry point is the transport industry, specifically our beachhead market are fuel cell catalysts for heavy duty vehicle applications. And the projected achievable market in the first five years is Europe with expected 200 billion euros in value. The platinum catalyst costs represents a major obstacle for high-scale commercialization of the hydrogen fuel cell technology. We see that platinum, a rare and expensive metal, and a crucial element in every fuel cell catalyst represents about 43% of total fuel cell production costs. Using our patented nanotech process, we can cut this cost by 25%. So now translating this into a business case of a Hyundai and their fuel cell vision in 2030, we can save them 700 million euros per year on the catalyst costs alone. Our product is a result of two-step action. First, it's our patented cookbook that enables us to better utilize the platinum. Now the second step is the recipe that enables our first application ready platinum cobalt or nickel nanocatalysts. 
our solution is scalable and has been validated in industrially relevant environment, reaching technology readiness level 6 this year. Economy of scale is important to our profitability. To reach almost 7 million euros in profit in the fifth year, we need to obtain just a small percentage of the total market share, but a few key customers that will buy a large volume of our product, lowering the cost of production. We are highway towards the hydrogen society. Our solution offers 40% better utilization of platinum when compared to the industry standards. This is very important because Europe has no natural resources of platinum and recycling will not be able to meet the increasing demand and scale. Um, so by reducing the use of platinum and significantly cutting the costs will actually enable the market to grow faster and more sustainable. We foresee heavy-duty transport industry as the main benefactor of this technology, also leading to cutting the CO2 emissions down. Our competitive advantage is very clear. It lies within our intellectual property of two patent applications and just as an important know-how. While our competition all uses the same production method to make comparable catalyst solutions, our patented nanotech method enables us a 40% reduction in platinum and two to three times more efficient catalysts. So this makes our product much cheaper to make and also enables the cost cutting on the system level as well. The main inventor, Dr. Gartalo, is in charge of the technology and product development and I'm in charge of the business development. Our mission is to enable mass commercialization of hydrogen fuel cells for heavy-duty transport. We'll achieve this by demonstrating tenfold reduction of precious metals necessary for this technology while creating healthy revenues of about 10 million euros per year. Recatalyst is a spin-out from the National Institute of Chemistry with a strong advisory team including industry experts and business development professionals with international experience. We have the technology, we have the right team, and it has a clear focus and motivation that will enable the development of green and sustainable technology that will power us into the future. Thank you. Matija in Tomaš, hvala lepa za vajeno predstavitev. Sam jo poznam že predvsej dobro. Morda eno vprašanje, kako se pripravljate za jutri? Should I answer in English or in Slovenian? Well, we can also speak in English, yeah. So how, how are you prepared for tomorrow? It's a big day for you tomorrow. Yeah, it's quite a big day because it's like, it's actually our second international competition, but it's the first one where we really believe that we can actually win it. Uh, and it's important because it's gonna, I, I feel it's a big uh, stepping stone that we need for the future in order to really like successfully start uh, the business that we're like preparing now for quite a while. Uh, it's uh, like the preparations have been going on actually the whole year where we were like building on the uh, business plan, like working uh, more on the technology, uh, talking with the investors, talking with companies, getting their feedback, uh, getting the uh, right testings to really show that our products are superior, that they are promising what we're uh, trying to uh, like uh, show with our presentations uh, and basically it's all now coming down to tomorrow uh, where it's basically up to the last four minutes of questions where we hope to put that extra cherry on top and uh, convince them convince them that really we are the future we are the revolution of the uh, hydrogen fuel cell uh, technology okay and if we predict that you win tomorrow, let's look beyond tomorrow. What will be beyond tomorrow if you win, for example? Yeah, beyond tomorrow is for sure a start of Recatalyst, I would say. And uh, it's the, it, it, it seems like we've already been uh, a long way, but it's actually the beginning of our journey as a company. And it's going to be, I would say, uh, I mean, everything that we learned so far is going to help us, but there's still a lot of things that we need to 
learn that we need to identify, uh, but we try to prepare the best as possible. And we really believe that uh, we can achieve the, what we are uh, aiming to do and that we can actually show the fuel cell market that we are the necessary choice if you want to grow fuel cell economy sustainably. Okay, I, I have just one question more. Maybe it is, again, a little bit provocative, but um, you, you are like an antipole of electrification of electrical vehicles. How do they see you? Do they see you as a competitor? Because it, it is a quite a huge lobby out there on the side of electrification and here you are. So how, how is going on? Yeah, I would say that what the market identified is that uh, like batteries cannot solve all the problems. And if we want to really get to the, this zero emission uh, world, we need to not, let's say, uh, take away any of the technologies that offer us to get there. So maybe fuel cells didn't look like the solution uh, because the batteries seem seem like to be a much mature, much more mature um, technology at the moment, but in the next 10 years, a lot will change. Like there, there is this constant joke that uh, when will the fuel cells be ready? It's gonna be in 10 years. Like this has been going on for now decades, but it actually took uh, the technology a lot of time to get where it's starting to become really promising also as a business case. And now it like the shortcomings of batteries, which are the really this heavy and long range applications has becoming uh, has became um, very evident, and all the companies are starting to notice where the markets lie, and then what's necessary to really get these markets going. Okay, very good. Fingers crossed for your future. <laughs> do do yes. I have Yanis here also? Yanis, are you still here? Yeah. Okay, Yanis. So one question also for you: If you look beyond tomorrow. Where do you see your company in, okay, let's, we are 2020 today, let's say 2025, where will you be in five years? Hopefully there will be more than five of us. This is the first goal to, to expand the business. Can you, be, can you be more specific? What, what means more than five? <laughs> well, we are five people now. Most of us are engineers and we are, uh, we are sure that what we are lacking right now is uh, someone with economical background, someone who can who can expand our business and scale up the scale up the company. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, we can expand this uh, waste management business as well uh, when or after we provide a proof of concept that this uh, this system is really working. We would uh, all. Uh, love to to be a part of, uh, of a, a circular economy uh, business model and uh, we're going to do our best to, to get there okay maybe this is a silly question but I, I will try to make a joke out of this do you see yourself in the future more as unicorn or double corn if i put it that way <laughs> honestly uh I'm not sure we are the unicorn, uh, but uh, we, we, we have the hooks. We, we, <laughs> we're going to be pushing forward uh, anyway with, with more than one, uh, one horn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anis. Thank you very much. Also, fingers crossed for you. And so yeah. thank you all three guys for your presentations. And yes, I, I believe we will hear a lot about you in the future. So uh, take care and we are moving further on because now we are coming, the heat is rising. We are coming to the competition part in which we will hear five innovative ideas. So now I will stay in English language because we will have presentations from different parts of uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Western uh, Balkan, and they will compete for three prizes. So the first prize will be 1,000 euros, the second prize 600, and the third prize 400 euros, and presentations of innovative solutions in front of the jury will take a maximum of three minutes. So you will all be timed for three minutes, and after these three minutes, 
you will have a maximum of six minutes for your answers to the questions of the jury. And the members of the jury today are Jakob Gajsek, who is the president of the jury from Ljubljana University Incubator. Then we have Sibila Borojevic Shostaric from University of Zagreb, Faculty of Mining, Geology and Petroleum Engineering. The third member is Moitza Markizeti from Iskra Emeko, you already know her. And then we have the fourth member, Lorena Jurado, also you know her from EIT Raw Materials. So the four members of the jury will evaluate the understanding of your problem, uh, how you understand also the solution for this problem, innovativeness, and then on which development stage you are and what is the market potential of your innovation idea. So yes, now it's the time and the first one on the stage today is Damir Gargurash from Slovenia who will present the innovation ARC Lab 1. Damir, the stage and three minutes are yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I will present you Arc Loop One. It's the novel cryogenic system um, based on lubricated carbon dioxide, and we use the system, or we can use the system, in the in the cut, uh, cutting of metal. So, why carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is all around us. So our cars are producing it. We are exhaling it, and we can actually take the CO2, store it, and use it for something different. For example, we can to uh, bring the uh, bring the caffeine out of coffee to have a um, non-caffeine coffee or we can use it into the into the cutting material so for the current problem is conventional machining where the emulsions which are harmful are used and we can replace these emulsions with with our technology with our innovative system arc loop one to achieve dry clean and productive uh, machining of metals how the system works is actually works in combining the CO2 with the oil and we get like mixture like soda and water, like um, one phase mixture, which is then uh, adopted to the machine. And here down in the video, we can see the, the system in action um, during uh, cutting of metal. So the current stage of this, uh, this uh, innovation is that it is tested in the real industry. It's a patent pending. Uh, European Union, and this, we have already the industry system available. The benefits, uh, so it's easier to use. We don't have a margin monitoring needed. We can achieve cleaner parts, low energy and CO2 consumption, increase productivity, reduce production costs, and this system provides us with overall sustainable machining uh, technology. So our market or where we can see this system is that we can see it inside of manufacturing field, more precisely in the CNC machining or CNC cutting of so-called difficult to cut materials. And we actually believe that with this clean technology, we can achieve cleaner industry uh, in of automotive, um, aviation, space, defense, and uh, medicine uh, industry. So, to, to conclude, uh, we do believe that um, cutting, uh, the solution in cutting is solution with Arc Loop 1. So thank you. I guess I will need to step in because uh, I, I hear that the president of the jury just uh, fell off the line. So um, I will lead for next minute or two. Uh, so please members of the jury, do you have any questions? I believe you have questions for our first pitcher. Thank you. Uh, if I can start with the questions on behalf of the jury, I would like to ask a little bit on the project team who is behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the current, uh, there are two people, so me and my colleague Luca. Uh, Luca is responsible mostly for um, um, bringing the, the parts, uh, so offering the parts and creating the system, so uh, building the system. Um, I'm mostly for uh, for marketing, uh, speaking with the companies, uh, researching uh, needs and our offers, um, and so on. Do you intend to enlarge the project team? Uh, yes, 
in in the near future yes for now uh, we are plan we are also um, tomorrow um, in the grand final of the jump starter so right after that uh, we are planning about opening a company so we are in uh, discussion with the uni and so on and after that we are planning to expand uh, for at least one or two persons okay so if we continue uh, with the second question um, did you maybe calculate what is the potential benefits or the impact of the use of this technology? For example, did you maybe take a certain factory of one automotive industry and uh, you know what's the scale of this factory and then you can say if they would use this technology, that means this less amount of CO2 footprint or that CO2, CO2 is used in this process and what that brings, something like that, something tangible. Yes, so if you look on a European scale, there is approximately more than 5 million tons of emulsions per year used. Um, and usually there is a like uh, 100 euros per uh, one machine uh, at the, uh, it's around uh, 200 liters, it's 100 euros of this emulsion to, to have a feeling of how much money is that. Um, the, the benefits are mostly in terms of uh, higher productivity and uh, we actually tested it in the in the Slovenian company when we actually achieved uh, achieved uh, up to 50 percent less uh, longer tool life and therefore um, less cost for the replacing the tools. So basically, our main advantage is that we can replace the existing emulsions with this technology, and we actually cut down the cost for the emulsion and actually cut down cost for the cutting tools because the productivity is a little bit longer. So for the same period of time, we're actually using less tools. Okay. We also have Jakob now. So uh, Jakob. Yes, yeah, sorry for the technical difficulty. Uh, sorry, during your pitch, you mentioned um, that it's cleaner. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Because, you know, Currently, the standard is emulsions, as you said. What's the problem with emulsions, and and uh, what where is the biggest advantage of your solution? So, first of all, what is emulsion? Emulsion is mixture of water and oil. So we put water and oil together, and to mix these two two together, so you need some chemicals that oil will stay inside of the water and not put on the top of it. And actually, this is the problem because you first have these chemicals of uh, joining the water and oil. And further on, you need to, uh, after the life of this emulsion, you need to recycle it. So we can actually put that aside completely by using the, uh, this, our, our innovation. That's, and then we, we don't have this, uh, let's say, wet process anymore because CO2, after its use, it's evaporated uh, back, into the, back into the environment and it actually gives us a clean and dry process. So what would be your clear competitive advantage? I mean, you've done research, what's existing now? Who else is developing similar technologies? Who are you different? Uh... So right on the field of CO2 machining, there is only one company. And if we compare um, us with them, uh, the main competitive advantage is that we are using less less much much less uh, co2 into the process and much much uh, less energy so for example they are using around one kilogram of uh, per minute and we are using maximum 200 grams uh, so five, five times less yeah uh, it's lorena speaking uh, you mentioned your industry ready I would like to know if you have some sales or pilot sales already and what would be your time to market? Yes, uh, first system was uh, implemented into the Slovenian company. Second system, it's sold to the Czech Republic, uh, to a machine tool manufacturer. And currently we are in the process of the building the system. The installation time will be uh, in the next uh, month or two. We have like six month contract uh, to build it, but we are planning in February to build it, put it in into the machine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dear Jerry, we are running out of time. So maybe last question. Yes, why didn't you use the whole time of your pitch? Because you were, you were 30 seconds early. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, because I said everything I wanted to say. 
<laughs> okay, I guess, uh, Moitza, I, I think this was a fair answer. Uh, and maybe Dam Damir thinks that uh, time is money, so uh, he didn't spend more time and more money. <laughs> okay, so uh, I this, this is, we summed up, and uh, Damir, thank you for the pitch and for the answers. And uh, Jerry, are we ready for the next one? Yes, we are. We go with the next one, who is coming from Montenegro. Uh, I kindly invite on the virtual state stage Nedim Tarakcia from Soil Mining Company. Nedim, are you here? Hi, everybody. First of all, uh, I'm Nedim from Soil Mining Company. And in today's world, uh, kind of the focus has shifted with the recent pandemic and, and, and not everybody's and not everybody's talking as much about uh, a very important problem that has been going on around the world you know, in the last 50 years. It's global warming or climate change. So we, we see as four main problems, and of course, four main problems that we can later on impact are the greenhouse effect, um, the mass use of uh, fertilizers are, are, are doing a great damage, the lack of food uh, over the world due to overpopulation, but also there's over a billion people at the moment that don't have enough food on a, on a daily basis. The industrial residue on to, uh, to this day is very poorly managed and if managed at all. And uh, on a global level, we're endangering biodiversity. So our, our solution and our, our product kind of resolves all four of these things and even more coming to this. And, and, and our product is kind of, kind of magical. So we, we produce, uh, fertile soil out of taking out of uh, land miles and uh, uh, sorry, out of land mines where we have taken out, I'm very sorry, local landfills. So out of industrial residue of coal mines, sorry for the, for the, for the mistake, uh, we take that residue and we transform it into blocks that can later on be transformed into fertile soil. Now, this sounds very magical. So, at the beginning, we're starting. We're intending first to start with the urban farmers. We have a we have a product of fifty euros, and this is our where we want to where we want to start uh, where we would intend to start. Now, the the sorry, the main sourcer or or the person that is responsible for developing this uh, this magic product is Mrs. Svetlana Potovchev, and she has won the Archimedes Award and she has won the Tesla, for, the, the Tesla Fest and she has also won the award of WIPO for the best, uh, the best invention. Now, our proposition is, is the following. All the current soils, and we will later, I will later touch on that, are, uh, are not comparable to us because now our soil lasts to, uh, costs five times less than any, anything available on the market. We do not need to fertilize it for 50 years, which is the magical element you know, out of residue, we take out and we make uh, virgin soil. And it does not lose its, its values once it's compressed. Now, this market is supposed to grow all the way up to $240 billion up, uh, in 2023. So we estimate that with this team, we can have a very good part of that market. So we have, of course, we have mentioned uh, the CEO, Svetlana, we have Strahinya, we have myself as sales, and we have a very good advisor, Mr. Mesa, that is also on the call. Now, as I mentioned before... Nedim, I will need to be very brutal because three minutes are off. Right. Uh, so uh, I will need to pass... Uh, I did not see the time ago. All right. There yeah. Uh, so the jury, you have six minutes. There, I, I believe there are some questions that needs to be answered. So uh, please take... I don't completely understand. Uh, I mean, I see the potential of what you're uh, solving, but how are you doing that? I, I, we, from your presentation, we, I was not able to understand what is basically your contribution. So, what's the technology be behind? What's the output? The the technology is taking residue of coal mining, so uh, industrial. Yeah. Waste. We take that with a process that we have uh, that we have invented we make blocks that later on once seeded and, and watered become soil so that is the so, product so it's soil. coal mining waste or industry waste Excuse or is that coal mining so the waste of coal mining that waste yeah okay that then you you should not refer to industrial because that's a whole lot bigger bigger uh okay 
Good. Okay. And, and you make uh, fertile soil. Okay. I was wondering, maybe I also would like to have a clarification. I, I ca ca catch uh, that you mentioned that these blocks of soil are, um, no, they don't need fertilizing for 50 years. 50 years, yeah. Uh, does that mean that you can have an agriculture running for 50 years on that soil without fertilization? How is that this is, possible? How did is, you calculate this? That, that is how, how it's supposed to work. Um, how did you calculate this? Based on what? I can, I can, invite, well, I can invite my colleague to, to answer that. That is a bit more technical question. How to calculate the, the, the duration of 50 years of virgin soil. Your colleagues? No, I guess we can give them a couple of seconds, but I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't answer that question. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make things up. One other question. You were saying that you're using waste of coal mining, uh, meaning that you can use the waste that's been there for, for years, for decades, or yeah. is this something that's like on a daily basis? So you'll be take care, taking care of the problem that's out there for a long time, or this is just new technology? We will be taking, problem that, we'll be taking care of the problem that's been out there for a long time, yeah. Can I, can I ask a, a, a sub-question related to the primary waste that you are using? Uh, what kind of a material from the point of mineralogy or geochemi geochemistry is there? Because usually the, the, well, the problem with the coals are that they can also be radioactive and so on. So I'm, I'm wondering what, what kind of the input you have. Great. Again, I, I'm supposed to have a colleague that has been unmute, unmuted, so I think they can answer now. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi, hello. We can hear you. Hello. I'm so sorry. Now you muted I yourself. hope that you yeah. heard me, everyone. Now we can hear you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the main uh, the main four substance for uh, our patent is uh, uh, is a uh, industrial residue for coal mines from uh, Yes, the, yes, uh, from marble, from stone, and from, yes, marble. That, that's Laporats, we call him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a soil pile. That's for, uh, residue from the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to understand. Uh, so you, you um, mix the, the residue uh, of the... Um, uh, that's coal? right. Coal uh, mine with these substances. Is that is patented, that is patented technology, which coal, yes, which coal, uh, re, uh, the, the replacement for natural fertile soil. That's the name of the patent, and mm -hmm. that's the base for our startup. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but what about the primary material, which is which is going in uh, the the material from the coal mine? What is the composition of that one? Okay, that's uh, for for main substance. That's a residue from from coal, from stone, from from soil pile and marble. That's for main substances. Hi. Uh, if I may ask, please, Lorena, it's, um, considering you go for the industrial waste from uh, coal processing and marble and stone cutting, that hits more in our uh, EIT raw material scope. Um, I would like to know if you have been selling or testing this, how close to market you are, What's your leverage to get this waste and because all these wastes you, you need some kind of uh, authorization. So what's your leverage to make it into the market 
when and what is the impact that you provide with this solution? I don't know, CO2 savings or whatever uh, environmental benefits that you provide or cost benefit or both. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Now, we are not in production phase. Uh, that's... We're, we're not in production uh, phase yet. We do have functioning prototypes and uh, we have surpassed, you know, the, the, the testing the testing phase. Now, the, the great impact we have. So soil within itself is very difficult to transport and to create. So it, it can, it's not it's not compacted. It can be, um, it's, it, it's very uh, gentle to transport, which means for, for very big quantities, you just cannot transport them from one side to another of the globe. And this is, you know, this is one of our, one of our main, main factors, which is the ease, the ease of use of the final product, which, and, and it can be transported even to the most remote places of the globe that are uh, or too sunny or too cold or too uh, or too humid now the impact that the, the actual impact that we can have is first we can reduce we can reduce by a lot the use of fertilizers everywhere where our technology is implemented uh, we can bring food to places where it's not available at the moment so that is uh, again you know overpopulation and over a billion people hungry that is also one of our most important things so bringing food to people that you know couldn't have it before in, in, in deserted places. And the environmental impact at the end is, again, once you can bring green areas and where you can Dear bring agriculture, agriculture where you couldn't, now is better. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, I will need to interrupt because the six minutes are already over. So uh, thank you, Nidim, for this presentation, for answers, and uh, thank you to the jury for questions. And we move uh, further on to the third speech and we go from Montenegro, we go back to Slovenia and I kindly invite on the virtual stage Blash Leskovar who will present their solution Cast QC. Blash, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so you have three minutes which are starting in five, four, three, Just two. Just to, to share the screen. Okay, yeah. so we will, we will wait for another couple of seconds okay i hope okay. you see me yes we can see it okay so we can start three minutes are yours why i don't have a file i'm sorry i don't have a file okay so good afternoon i am lash Leskovar, and in this short pitch presentation i will present the cascuzzi idea our team have the has developed a novel ultra high strength aluminium alloy reinforced with quasi-crystalline particles, which forms in situ during the solidification. The novel alloy is fully recyclable and can be produced by existence cost-effective technology. Due to its ultra-high mechanical properties, it directly contributes to light weighting and resource, uh, reduce resource utilization. Indirectly, it also contributes to cleaner environmental as a lighter vehicle is always uh, more efficient irrespective of whether it runs on petrol, diesel, or electrical power. So we are selling the ultra high strength aluminum flat rod plate. Uh, our batch at market are recreation vehicle producers and we uh, produce the normal alloy for 3,200 euros per ton. Uh, this is our estimated batch at market. In Slovenia, there's annual pr production of RVs estimated to around 8,000 vehicles, where Europe has 210,000 uh, vehicles, and the world production is 750,000 RVs, which are sold for around uh, 16 billion euros. And of course, we don't want to produce the RV, but just envelope the body for the, for the RVs, which is estimated around 20 square meters of the flat road plate. So, the value that CASQC proposed to recreation vehicle producers is that by using the novel aluminum alloy, they can achieve the same or equivalent strength with a lower flight price and the same or equivalent strength with a thinner plate. Uh, this will provide them cost savings and, of course, material weight savings for the recreation vehicle production productions. They can, in comparison to two commercial aluminum alloys that are uh, available on the market, uh, we can reduce the weight for 
24 percentage when using the alloy from the series seven and for around 60 percentage for when using alloy series six. And when we go into the price, we can reduce the price for 17 percent while using uh, series seven and uh, almost 40 percent by using the series six. So uh, the product is the flat rod plate with excellent mechanical properties uh, due to formation of quasi-crystalline phase that reinforce al aluminum metrics in comparison to conventional aluminum alloys, has a higher physical properties, better tubological properties, is corrosion resistance, and has better thermal, thermal resistance. On the other hand, with the use of the novel aluminum plate in RV, one can directly contribute to reduction of CO2 footprint energy consumption, and of course, resource utilization in Europe. Our financial shows that we need uh, 775 euros to produce. Uh, Blanche, unfor unfortunately, I also need to interrupt you because the, the three minutes and we calculate it uh, also before are over. Um, okay. So uh, you will, maybe you will explain this to the journey in, in your answer. So Jory, are you here? The six minutes are yours. Okay, I, I could ask uh, straight away. Uh, you're mentioning that you have uh, equal performance with a thinner plate. That's fantastic. Yeah. You're exposing. Why is that? Are you using more critical raw materials for these? Alloy? Is it about the alloy? About the? No, it's just about the phase that reinforce the aluminium metrics. Usually, uh, in the commercial aluminium alloys, we use the crystalline phases, which has the straight, which has the rough interface between the aluminum metrics and this uh, strengthening phase. But in this case, we use the quasi-crystalline phases, which has a higher symmetry. And then the strains are better convent, convert from the uh, aluminum metrics to this reinforcement phase. So the impact you provide is less use of aluminum alloy. Yes. And for equal And control. cheaper one. Oh, and cheaper. OK, that's good. Thank you. And you use less energy in producing that as well. Yeah, of course. I understand. Yeah, okay. because we, we there is uh, less material needed for the production. Okay. But, uh, you mentioned that there is a, a, a highly crystalline or quasi-crystalline phase. Yes. What does that mean? Do you need more energy to produce this phase comparing to the other? So, uh, do you yeah, have estimations? Actually, actually, it's just the solidification process. You need the higher cooling rates, but this can be achieved by the by uh, conventional techniques. So, do you have estimation of the expenses here, and did you calculate it in the, in the final savings? They are similar as for uh, conventional alloys because you can produce this alloy on the conventional uh, casting machines where these cooling rates already exist. So, you have already these cooling rates you needed for the formation. Mm -hmm. So it is just the time, yeah. the past time. So yeah. how, how longer just is the time? Yeah. How, do you know how longer do you need to prepare this phase, semi-crystalline, comparing to the non-crystalline? Yeah, it's actually the same time. When you put the alloy through the, let's say, when it's the high pressure die casting, mm -hmm. it's always the same. But the difference is uh, that to form these phases, you have a little bit different chemical composition that they form. So we did not we did not use some uh, unknown or rare elements, but usual elements, but in a little higher concentrations. But in the end, you have the cheaper alloys because uh, you have a thinner plate. Thank you. It's not what the same composition. Eh? What is your competition? I mean, what is your competitive advantage? You said you tested it with uh, some factories or some producers in Slovenia. What's it's, the result? It's tested in a laboratory, not yet on the oh. industry scale. <clears throat> but this is now what we want to achieve. It's to test it on the industri industrial scale and then spread around the world. So you're already talking with some... Uh, yes, we are talking with, uh, with the Talon, which one which uh, there will be the first uh, experiments. And then we have also some potential uh, final customer, but it's still in, 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 we are still talking. But have you reached out to the end users? So to the producers of uh, vehicles and so on to see the interest and everything? 
Yeah, now because we have. If uh, they are pushing, if they see the benefits, if they will be pushing, it goes much faster. Yeah, I know, but uh, to get to the car industry, so to to producer of BMW or Audi, it's uh, really hard. So we want to get through the budget market. But you have uh, which, in Slovenia some important ones uh, that are, you know, Adria Mobile and Adria Dome that are producing these vehicles and caravans and everything. Have you tried and reached out to them? Because I, I have reached out, but the, there was no answer yet. So okay. we go, go to the Nautic systems where they are interested to produce uh, bodies of the aluminum alloy because they're, there's one company which wants to produce uh, electrified uh, boats. And there is a weight of the final boat very important and they want mm -hmm. to use this novel uh, alloy. But we are okay. still mainly on the laboratory scale. So we must first upscale to the industrial one and then further on. What would be the time you would expect to be able to develop this? Oh, uh, we hope in the range of three to five years. So first we, we need the prototype, which is let's say in between the laboratory industry, because if we go to the industry and uh, say, we need to five ton of a novel alloy and we are not sure if everything is going okay, we need something in between and then to go to the industry. So this is uh, a little bit uh, time consuming. Okay, thank you. Why are we uh, recreation vehicles? Uh, this was our, our first estimated uh, budget market. But when we talk with the industry, we will change this batch market probably to the, to the, let's say, to the boat industry or something like that, where the, we are more prepared to participate with, with this project and so on. So this was our first idea where we can go because we are here in, in this uh, area mobile here in Slovenia and we thought that they would be interested, but from now it's not the... Right. Dear jury, we have 10 seconds left. I guess uh, we ran name? out of. No, Sorry? Okay. It's, uh, you can check on alloys.com. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so, so we can check it there. And Blush, thank you for all your answers. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, keep on the good work. And yes, Thanks. Wait, wait with us until the end. Okay. Okay, uh, Jerry, how are you feeling? Stressed? Excellent. Excited for the next one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lorena, less, less Moisa, stress. Sibila. Okay. Less stress than our participants, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's move to to the fourth one. Uh, from Slovenia, we go to our southern neighbors, to Croatia. Uh, do we have Filip Petric here? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, you're ready, so yes. let's go in three, two, one, start. Okay, so welcome uh, to the presentation of my innovation here under its code name, GeoBody. Uh, so let's establish the problem. So for geologists, uh, their ability to precisely test and determine properties of rocks on site is a skill many rely on. Uh, they have a vast selection of tools which are needed for their work. But do they uh, actually enjoy having so much of them? Uh, by nature of field prospecting and the field work, some of those things get lost. So the solution is already presented and it is uh, easier to use just one tool. Uh, so here we come to my solution, and uh, it is uh, simple. It is a multi-practical tool for geologists. Uh, GeoBody solves many practical needs, and it's sturdy and reliable. It is a, a four-stage scratch-based uh, testing tool, which uh, relies on MOS scale. So just like in geology, uh, the idea is in prototyping stage and uh, more testing will be needed later on. A commercial version of GeoBody might be ready as soon in the coming year. Uh, so 
uh, what are its features? Uh, it has plenty of uh, new features, and uh, the main thing is a four-level interchangeable scratching rods, which, as I said, are based on most scale. It is convenient, easy to use, and relatively cheap. Uh, intentionally, it's made hard to lose. Uh, it has extra features like cut and carbide fit, magnetic fit, little red light, and many more. Uh, okay, and uh, who are our uh, targeted customers or users? Uh, so preferably it would be field geologists and prospectors, but it's also uh, available for mineral collectors or hobbyists and concrete industry. And uh, it can also be used as a gift. So summary, this uh, innovation encompasses many useful tools as a geologist might need. It relies on a scratching method, uh, makes determining the rock type easier and more convenient. It can be used in many other purposes. Thank you. Uh, the time is up, so the three minutes, it's quite a short time for, for pitching, but yes, you will answer the questions if needed uh, from the jury. Okay, are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Let's start. Do you have any indication of how much uh, the cost would be or the price you're, you sell it for and the cost to manufacture? Cost of manufacture is uh, not known yet, but uh, some basic estimates are uh, made and the customers are uh, said to me that, that they are not willing to pay uh, more than uh, 100 euros. Uh, some of them are likely to pay just 50 euros and nothing more. So around 50 and 100. And um, how many geologists are there in Europe that would use this kind of tool? Well, I bet there are many. Um, I have talked uh, with some geologists already and they would love to use this tool. So oh, it's definitely uh, nice to have one multi-practical tool than to you know, go with a whole set of the equipment on the field, which as you said, it's really easy to get lost, especially when you're somewhere in the wood. I would like to see this, uh, this working. Uh, my, my question is um, whether there are any um, competition in this uh, in this, uh, well, let's say, uh, the invention, uh, and what are they? They have had you detected them? Uh, so, I there are some competitors. Uh, it is basically uh, Workmaster Pro. Uh, they have a product that is called uh, Moss Scratching Kit or something like that. And uh, they offer a solution which is again made of four different parts which are easily lost. Uh, their model costs uh, $100 and has eight stages of uh, testing. But uh, my method of uh, attacking them is uh, by innovations and upgrades. So that, that would be it. Uh, what is the market size for, for this uh, competition? Have you, have you had any additional checks? Uh, well, I uh, did some research like on uh, Facebook uh, and uh, other social media about uh, geology, technology, hobbyists, mineralogists and such. And uh, I have counted around, uh, I think that was uh, somewhere 5,000 uh, users of those groups. So if um, not all are gonna uh, buy this, but some of that them might, and uh, that might be good enough. At what, uh, what phase is uh, your innovation at the moment? I mean, which, which phase is it? Uh, you have already tried that, so there's uh, uh, experiments went, were uh, in the field already, or uh, the 
it is in a, in a stage where it is basically ready, but not all of its functions. So a prototype is ready, but it will be made from plastic, not metal, because it's cheaper, cheaper, easier, and uh, it's um, plastic. Uh, so I can make more of it if I need. Uh, and the prototypes will be tested probably this year or the next. What would be the, the average, uh, let's say, um, predicted time or length uh, for, for this product? Uh, I mean, if you don't lose it somewhere. What is the, uh, can you please repeat? What would be the, 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 the duration of the product? Uh, well, um, I think it could go beyond 10 years if you don't want. If you don't lose it, okay. Uh, who's in your team? Uh, well, it's uh, basically me and uh, some of my professors from uh, college, which uh, offered me their help. Uh, Any other you, oh, okay. Yeah, how did you come up with the idea? I mean, uh, what was your incentive? What was the trigger? I mean, what is the benefit? I'm I'm asking. So, what was your motivation? What was your trigger? And what on the other side is the benefit? Benefit beside you know having only one tool and and making life easier for for geologists on on the field. Well, the idea was born in my high school where I used to uh, find interesting rocks and uh, since I went for a mining technician I had a geology professor which uh, answered many my many of my questions and I noticed he used iron uh, knives key chains keys and a lot of stuff to determine the uh, most and then I uh, figured it would be a lot better to have a tool already uh, ready and uh, which could be used just for that. Okay, thank you to all. The last second just went away. So this is the end of six, six minutes. Uh, thank you, Philip, for your presentation, also for your answers. Thank you, Jerry, for your questions. Uh, Philip, stay with us until the end. And yes, four down, one more to go. We are at the last person who will pitch in front of the jury. And uh, we have uh, the only lady here, Sunchica. Hello. 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 Welcome can you hear on, the, me? On, the, on the, yes, we can hear you on the virtual Great. stage. Uh, Sunchica is coming from Bosnia, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, and she will talk about rapid acid wound treatment based on micronized Bosnian Pyrophyllite. Did I pronounce it right? Pyrophyllite. Yes, okay. It can thank you. Be said as pyrophyllite. Pyrophyllite is okay. Okay. So okay. Good. Thank yes. you. If you can start sharing your presentation, and yes. we will set the timer. Yes. Just okay. Seconds. Okay. Okay. Technical crew. Can you can you, you can start can you in, it? yes, we can see. Three, two, Great. one, Sunchica, go. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Sunchica Sokor, and I'm coming from the University of Vanilluka. I will present you my innovation called the Rapid Acid Wound Treatment based on micronized Bosnian pyrophyllite. For the beginning, I will say something about pyrophyllite. Here you can see some general properties, but the most important one is that it's a very soft mineral. It is also very similar to talc, as you can see from crystal structure shown here. Uh, the only difference is that in piece of uh, in the place of magnesium in talc, you can see aluminum in pyrophyllite. Applications of pyrophyllite are very diverse, but our innovation focuses on galenic product. Here you can see two photographs of Bosnian deposit near the Konit city, which is confirmed to be around 38 million tons. Although there are many deposits of pyrophyllite in the world, but we are proud to say that the Bosnian one is probably the most uh, large. 
the aim of our innovation is to use pyrophilate for uh, treatment of acid wounds. As you know, acid accidents and acid uh, attacks are a very common problem. If our uh, innovation is confirmed, pyrophilate can be used for remediation of acid spills. Now we'll continue with methodology. Here you can see some specifications of Bosnian pyrophilate. For example, I know for example, you can see them, uh, XRF data, TG data, and XRD data. Uh, here you can see sample preparation. It's one gram of mineral in a 100 milliliter of acidic solution of different pH values after which kinetics of neutralization were measured. Uh, uh, the setups of kinetics experiments are shown here. A uh, shaker bath was used for longer kinetics and magnetic stirrer for kinetics below one minute. Uh, after uh, the uh, setup and everything, uh, pH uh, values were measured using uh, with the state of the art pH meter. Now, the innovative results. Here uh, you can see that we obtain a lot of data, but they are best summarized graphically. Finally, you can see that we have proved that uh, pyrophilate is a very good uh, acid neutralizing agent with almost uh, instant kinetics. Thick red line, which is shown here, uh, explain it best. Uh, you can see that even pH of two is instantly neutralized and even bufferized to the acceptable pH values. And now the perspective to develop a product, uh, we are considering uh, two, uh, two types of products, a simple one powder and a suspension uh, with a suspension of pyrophilate with a hydrogel uh, in uh, like polyacrylic acid. Uh, we are preparing tests with colleagues from biology department to test this uh, two forms on animal skin pig phantom, uh, after which we'll write the patent. Here are my acknowledgements. Thank you for your attention. Sunchica, thank you very much. You were bang on time. And now <laughs> you don't have six minutes, like I said before. It was quite uh, a laughing here. Uh, and also there were some uh, messages that I said, uh, six minutes. So you will have six <laughs> minutes for answering for, minutes. For, for answering the questions of the jury. So okay. please, members of the jury, start with your questions. Okay. Great, thank you for the presentation. Uh, how is your uh, structure of the team? Uh, I mean, where are you situated? Uh, how did you come up with the idea and what's your team? Okay. Okay, so I am at the University of Banja Luka. Uh, I was a student and this uh, work about pyrophilite or pyrophilite was my graduation thesis actually. There okay. we proved that pyrophilite is a very good neutralizing agent. And as I said, that was my graduation thesis. So we are continuing to research that. Would, and I... now I am research assistant and this is one part of my job. Uh, Sunchica, thank you also for, for very nice presentation. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about other neutralizing agents which are currently used for, for treating these acid wounds? And what is the benefit of this parafilite comparing to that one? Okay, well, the most, the neutralizing agent which is used the most is sodium uh, bicarbonate, if I said it right. Uh, but uh, the the benefit of our product is that we have it that we have it as I said before in presentation around 38 million tons in our country and that our product can be very cheap because uh, we are exporting pyrophilate from Bosnia for 200 uh, Bosnian marks per ton uh, which is around one, uh, 100 uh, euros per ton. So our products uh, would be definitely cheaper than the products that are used now for that. But comparing to the reaction time, uh, do you have any data about the reaction time of the of the sodium bicarbonate comparing to the pyrophilate? Well, uh, at this point, I didn't. I still didn't compare uh, these uh, data, but I uh, we are planning to do so. And as I said, we are planning to test pyrophilate on animal skin phantom, uh, specifically pig skin phantom. Uh, we will do that with colleagues from biology department. And we are, I mean, it could be very soon. 
So what you're trying to say, you prove that it works, but you don't know yet if it's better than uh, the other substances. Uh, we, we cannot say it for sure. Okay. Course, but it definitely works. Okay. Uh, is anybody, I mean, is this technology, is this material used anywhere across the world? Have you researched that? You think for for this uh, kind of access, yeah. this treatment? Uh, no, no, still no. We we didn't find any literature uh, data. Okay, I mean, so uh, they they did. I mean, paraffin is used, but for other purposes. Mm -hmm. For this one, not yet. Okay. Okay. I mm -hmm. I'd like to know what would be the market for this and. For my potential product. For this application that you're aiming at, I guess you choose this application because you see it can be more valuable and you can have the, the higher uh, profit. Yes, yes. I said that we are considering form of our product in the future, but the market is well, potentially very large. For example, every laboratory, every institute, research institute in the world could use it. I mean, should have a neutralizing agent in the laboratory, then professional cleaners that work every day with substances that contain acids. Mm -hmm. uh, though also we, all, all people in the world, in our homes, we are using substances for cleaning the different surfaces. Uh, and for example, for um, uh, car, car, workshops when wait a minute just to think how how what i want to say i know what i want to say uh, in workshops that we are for example repairing cars there are a lot of acids too so uh, the usage of acids are enormous so potentially use of my product could be also very large Yes. Mm -hmm. And what would be the um, environmental benefits of this solution, both from the um, sourcing of it and uh, for the value? Oh, for, okay, okay. So as I uh, answered before in Mrs. Sibylla, I think, question, I'm not sure who, who asked me that, uh, there are a large, large uh, quantity of, of pyrophilic in Bosnia. So uh, we have 38 million tons confirmed. Uh, it is an open pit, that deposit, it is an open pit. So uh, it uh, the energy consu consumption uh, should be lower than if it's not an open pit. Uh, and as I said, it is a very cheap material, mineral. I have uh, one additional question to you, Sunchitsa. Okay. Um, Pyrophilate in the deposits are it's never clear, uh, clean completely. So it always contains a number of additional minerals, uh, as uh, talc, uh, as serpentinite, or even sometimes sulfites. And um, uh, did you? Uh, I could not see the X-rays. Did you detect additional minerals in your samples? Uh, we did detect uh, different elements, chemical so, elements. So please, before. in a uh, half minute, if, uh, if it works okay. for you, okay. we ran out of time. So we did uh, detect different uh, elements, chemical elements, which is normal. Uh, there are aluminum uh, silicon, uh, because it's aluminum silicate, of course. And there are a lot of uh, chemical elements, such as calcium, per, uh, till up to 6%, then iron, magnesium, uh, but I noticed you have the uh, X-ray diffraction pattern, so that means that you would know the mineralogy. Uh, well, uh, there is uh, quartz. Mm -hmm. Besides, besides paraffin, there is an uh, uh, I don't know in percent. I don't know percentage for from this point. I know, but I forgot at this moment. But there are uh, quartz in paraffin. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sunchitsa Sibila. I will thank need you. to excuse. Uh, we ran out of time. Uh, okay, so we are at the end of these five pitches. Sunchitsa, please wait until the end. Jerry, you will, you will now go to the other virtual room. You will take your mm -hmm. 10 minutes uh, to discuss and uh, to, to discuss about who will be the winner, who will take the second and the third stage. So you can go now uh, and meanwhile in these 10 minutes, 
we will listen to something very, very interesting and I will go back to Slovenian, my mother language. Uh, zaključen je torej tekmovalni del današnjega dneva in predstavitev vseh inovativnih idej. Uh, sedaj se bo komisija odmaknila, kot sem že povedal, v angleščini, vzeli si bodo čas za razmisek, no v tem umestnem času, v teh desetih minutah, pa bo predstavljeno zelo pozitivno in zanimivo delovanje Zavoda spodbujanje podjetništva mladih JA Slovenija, ki je v okviru programa Skills for Future in ob sodelovanju tudi EIT Raw Materials v lanskem šolskem letu, dijaška podjetja usmirjalo v produkte in storitve za krožno gospodarstvo. In besedo predajam uh, tele gospe, ki je na drugi strani, Maji Juršič in pa mlademu gospodu, lahko rečem, kar gospodiču, Janezu Pokljukarju iz zmagovalnega dijaškega podjetja uh, Recolor, 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 kakorkoli že temu rečemo, Predajam vam besedo in srčno upam, da bomo videli tudi zmagovalni video. Evo, deset minut je vajnih. Super, hvala ti za besedo. Um, je, um, se pravi, jaz sem Maja Jušič, kot je omenil. Uh, želela vam bi pa uh, danes povedati nekaj o, o našem zavodu, pravzaprav imamo dolg naziv, imenujemo se Zavod za spodbujanje podjetnosti mladih, um, kar pa pomeni, da smo ja ali drugače Junior Achievement uh, Slovenija. Um, upam, da se bo zdaj moja prezentacija videla, mečkam sem se na začetku zaštrikala, ampak upam, da jo zdaj uh, vidite. A je res. Jana sa vidva. Ja, ok. Uh, se pravi, um, uh, smo zavod, katerega cilj je, da i mlade izobražujemo in vodimo program Moje podjetje. In v okviru tega je deloval znam tudi Janez, ki ga je omenil Aleš. In uh, Janez je v lanskem letu sodeloval z nami in je svojim misošolci ustanovil dijaško podjetje in tudi zmago potem na našem nacionalnem tekmovanju in osvojil naslov podjetje leta. Jaz predlagam, da si najprej pogledamo film, ki je bil že omenjen, potem pa bo Janas nekoliko več povedal v svoji skušni in na to spet nadaljujemo z mano. Meet Jose. He's a young maker who likes to create new stuff. But his workshop is full of dirty brushes and a lot of spray cans, so he never finds the right color. And on top of that, he's producing a lot of waste. Jose, wake up! We have a product that will solve all your problems. It's called Recolor. Martin, Janis and me, we also like to create a new stack, but instead of using normal brushes and regular spray can, we use our revolutionary product. It works like a normal spray can, but you can refill it with the color and compress air. We are currently working on our second improved prototype. We have changed the original design to improve versatility and save on the weight of the product. The color is user-friendly and can be filled at home. You simply unscrew the lid of the can and power in the correct mixture of paint. Then you close the lid and fill the can with compressed air. After that you simply shake it and use like a normal spray. You will save almost 50% of your money and a lot of your time because you don't need to go back to shop to buy a new color can. Our color can is made from recycled materials. It's filled with compressed air while other cans use harmful gases. If someone wants to dispose of the recolor can, they can bring it back to our company and we'll recycle it. We started with 150 euros of initial capital. In the future, we intend to increase our production and enter the European market. And after that, we would like to present our product to the world as well. Enough talking and try our new product! Let's 
ناقص ده ايه زينا ده اليو ام ياسم يا ناس قلت لك اسمه سوبير فيديو اسمه قبل التعبان كوميسينا يوروس كمان تكنولوجيا بس بابرنا يوم عاوز كاسنا زي فيديو اسمه نردو تلت عن سكات سكوبينا تري دياكي سبراو ياكوب مارتين انياس pri temu projektu nas je vas prijemljala tudi mentorica Zvonka Jerce. Sam projekt smo naredili za šolske namene, ker je pa mentorica menila, da je dost dober, smo se odeležili tudi slovenskega tekmovanja. Naredili smo prototip, video, poslovni model in vse to vdali, na koncu pa tudi zagovarjali pred komisijo. Na presenečenje vseh nas smo zmagali in dobili naziv Podjetje leta, in s tem tudi vdeležili evropskega tekmovanja. Še prijem smo vršili na evropske tekmovanje, smo mogli popraviti, dopovniti, izpopovniti naš poslovni model. Posnije smo nov video, imeli smo tudi priprave za sam nastop, vse smo mogli govoriti v angliščini. Bilo je veliko dela, Ampak mislim, da je bilo vredno, mislim, kot skupina smo se zelo povezali, med snijenem filmu smo zelo uživali, sozna smo nove ljudi, pomagal nam je tudi Jakob Rejec, Maja Juršič, tako da mislim, da je bilo zelo vredno. Poj, kot finale je pa prišli tudi Evropsko tekmovanje, tam smo se udeležili virtualno, najprej smo imeli virtualne stojnice, tam smo spoznali tudi nove ekipe, so tekmovalce, in odgovarjena vprašanja. Tako, zelo zanimiv vzračje je, ki so ljudi okrog tebe, iste starosti z usveralnimi idejami. Tako, nevarjetno je. Z nekaterimi smo se izmenali kontakte in smo še danes v stiku. Kot konec, proti konca tekmovanja, smo imeli pa tudi intervju z glavno žirijo, Tam je tudi zelo tako mirni so bili, tudi treme nismo imeli preveč. Mislim, da smo kar dober zagovarjali. Tako da, če pa vzajemo vse skrb, delaj je bilo velik, ur smo veliko vložili v to sam izdelek. Ampak mislim, da je bilo vredno. Smo se kot skupina povezali, pa izkušnje so bile res velik tist, kaj štajajo. Ne samo te podjetniške izkušnje, ampak tudi kako se odreži tih večjih tekmovanj, predstavitev, tako, življenjske izkušnje. Tako da bi vsega, če kaj tega, bi spodbudil, da se udeleži podobnega projekta. Hvala. Super, Janez, hvala ti. Jaz bi pa želela nadeljevati čez tem, kar sem vam želela povedati, s čem vse se v našemu zavodu ukvarjamo in kaj je naš cilj. In sicer se pravi, naš cilj je osrednji je, da vodimo program Moje podjetnje za srednje šolce. To delamo v okviru Evropske in tudi svetovne organizacije, ki se imenuje Junior Achievement. V lanskem letu smo se pa tudi vključili v projekt Skills for the Future na pobudo EIT-ja Raw Materials. In na tak način smo pravzaprav začeli tudi sodelovati z Geološkim zavodom Slovenije in RC Adria. Tukaj smo zelo hvaležni, da sta nas lahko Urška Šolc in Rok Brajkovič izjemno podprla kot mentorja, dijakom, predavatelja in pa tudi kot člana naše žirije na našem nacionalnem takmovanju. Podarila bi tukaj, da z vključitvijo ta program so dijaki začeli izjemno so bili tematsko bolj usmerjeni, kar pomeni, da so svoja dijaška podjetja zasnovali tako, da so bila zasnovana na podlagi krožnega gospodarstva in tudi surovin, kar je pa seveda težje, tematika ni enostavna in tukaj so nam ta predavanja in to posredovanje znanje v strani roka izjemno pomagale in se mi zdi, da so dijake lažje usmerile. Jaz bi tukaj samo še povdarila, da Junior Achievement je organizacija, kot lahko vidite, ogromnega merila, delujo na petih kontinentah, kontinentih, vključeno je ogromno dijako in tudi sama evropska pisarna oziroma evropski trg je izredno močen in da imamo tukaj priložno sredstvo zavestati veliko dijakov in jim dati neke neprecenljive izkušnje. 
pri, pri našem programu bi pa želja samo še to podati je ena pomembna stvar, oziroma po čem se razlikujemo od drugih. Uh, naš cilj je, da povezujemo dijake z poslovnim svetom, z strokovnjaki in da na tak način dobivajo tudi pomembne izkušnje in da praktično stvari izdelujejo. Se pravi, da ne ostane njihov poslovni načrt samo na papirju. Naš cilj je, da naredijo izdelek in ga ne nazadnje tudi prodajo. To je cilj našega programa. Tukaj je svidem nadgradno, kaj, kaj recimo dijaki um, dobijo nekaj več in o čem smo, bi rekla, mogoče močni. Um, Ima pa sam program močno strukturo, ker kot lahko vidite, že je v lanskem letu Junior Chiment praznoval 100 to um, obletnico delovanja in je program trden, ima dobre osnove in um, se da na njemu lepo delati in tudi od jake vozi, vodi čez vse te faze, se pravi, da stanovitve poslovanja in likvidacije in na ta način poznajo celo, in imajo občutek te celovite podjetniške izkušnje. Poleg tega se nam zdi zelo pomembno to kritično mišljenje in učenje na lastnih izkušnjah in bi tukaj mogoče kar zaključila, da ne bi bila predolga, mogoče bi samo še podarla na koncu, da se je rodilo tudi z tega nekaj pravih podjetij, od tegelca, pet paka in permafruta, če bi kdo si še želel dodatno pogledati. Hvala za povabilo, hvala, da so lahko predstavila svojo izkušnjo. Če bi me kdo želel kontaktirati lahko, drugače pa lež bi ti kar um, predala besedo. Ja, hvala lepa, Maja. Pa, pa ne odhaje, še, imam še kakšno vprašanje za te. Aha, če, bi, če bi lahko pomislila na en res lep, pozitiven, ali je to moment, situacijo, karkoli v v prvem letu, v tem JA Slovenija. Če, če, če imam pravo informacijo, si prvo leto, kar vodiš ta projekt, ne? Kaj si si najbolj zapomnila? Um, ja, le, res je leto, sem šele drugo leto v tem, imam to srečo. Najbolj sem si zapomnila pravzaprav dijake, kar na koncu sem videla, koliko so bili veseli, tudi, ko so zmagali in potem, ko smo skupaj snimali ta skupni film, ker letos jaz žal nisem mogla videti tega sejma, ker naše nacionalno tekmovanje je pravijo <laughs> zelo močno izkušnjo in res vidiš dijake, kako to srcem delajo. Sem imela pa priložnost potem, da smo z Janazom in njegovimi sošolci snemali ta video spot in takrat sem videla pač ta njihov žar in to ti res da potem neko energijo za delati za naprej. No. Tako. Ki je ne poplačan oben denar. Tako, tako. Hvala lepa, Maja, da delaš dobro delo. Janez, uspešno še naprej. Spremljal sem vas, tudi vaš razvoj. Super, navdušen sem. Bodite fajn, bodita fajn, delajte dobro še naprej. Ja, nič, mi pa gremo k zadnjemu dejanju današnjega dneva. Če se ne motim, so, je celotna komisija prišla nazaj iz druge virtualne sobe. Torej prosim vse člane žirije, da se mi pridružijo. So I kindly welcome back all members of the jury. I believe they are back from their virtual room where they were discussing about who will take the first three prizes. One very good thing about the breakout rooms in uh, either Zoom or some other um, a platform is that they, the persons in that virtual breakout room can be kicked out. So uh, it is not up to them if uh, they will go out of the breakout room, but they are actually, they are kicked out. And yes, here we have all four members of the jury. You were kicked out of your breakout room. I guess you had enough time to discuss and now that you already know who are the three winners, but anyway, before you will tell us about these three winners, I have a couple of questions to discuss with you. I guess you are very experienced also in pitching and in everything, so you can also give some good insights to all of five persons that were pitching. But first question, Jakob, I have for you, because uh, there, was, there was one moment when there was the question, 
you you said you you said a question. Do you know the number? I think of geologists in yeah. Europe, and the question was, I don't know about the number, but I bet there are many. And I saw that look in your eyes. Oh, oh damn! I bet there are many. Uh, am I right? Yes. They, yeah, they you, say you, they yeah. say they say that assumption is the mother of all ah, fuck ups. And yeah. uh, I, 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 I guess I could feel you that moment. That was something like something along those lines went through my head. That's true, and it is something we discussed. You know, for instance, um, I'm, I'm not a geologist. I don't know the first thing about geology. Not really. I mean, unless what what we learned in high school and a little bit at at, at university. But um, you know, so points like that is something that I'd like to say for for all the competitors especially things related to market were something that were not very clearly defined. You know, they weren't quantified. Um, and this is something you really need to know because the first markets you're going to be entering and the people in general, like, you know, whenever you, um, whenever you give an answer, that's really not an answer. Like, you know, but there are many and sorry to single you out here, but Philip, but uh, you know, you made such a perfect example. It, it seemed, I, I liked your answer. It wasn't, it just wasn't very useful. Um, <clears throat> um, is your, you destroy your credibility, right? You, you make a, a good pitch and then we give you a question and it's, well, I don't know um, if, if, if it's related to your product. And obviously you're all at a very early stage. It's understandable. You don't know everything. And it's fine if you say, that's something I don't know. Obviously, we'll look into it. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a general uh, comment we, we discussed right until the very end. <laughs> we got kicked out of our break. Uh, Jakob, if I go further on, uh, because uh, you put an idea, well, uh, a mind into my head. Uh, you said if you don't know something, um, then you do something. But what, what is your opinion in this kind of moment? when you go into the direction fake it till you make it well do you think it's better to fake it uh, when you don't know the answer it's so if you can fake it in the sense that you know a little bit and you can make an assumption and say look i don't know the exact number but it's around here and you make a ballpark guess and you say it's an assumption i think that's good if you outright say i know it's 175000 Right, um, and it turns out that it's fifty thousand or three million, making things up, obviously. Um, yeah. Then you will come off. Then maybe you you make a good impression in your first meeting, but then you ruin your chances in the second one when we get a little bit deeper. So I would never recommend making things up fully. But if you can make an educated guess and say that it's an educated guess, that's fine. Okay, great. That were great insights. Uh, do you have any suggestions for our candidates? Yes, we do have a couple of general suggestions uh, discussed with the, with the uh, three members of my jury. I didn't even have to ask too many questions because all the jury members were so active and I really love <laughs> that because that's always, that's always something, you know, to see that the pitches are engaging because it's, that's first a very good thing for all the pitchers, you know, all of you got quite a lot of engagement from the jury, which is which is something that's not always seen. So don't take that for granted. Um, one general thing is quantify everything, right? A pitch is about attracting attention and then building out credibility, right? And credibility is built out by, by telling us that you really understand what you're talking about and convincing us towards that. And you can do that with you know, with data that you stand behind where you, you don't, it's not a, it's not a scientific paper. You don't need to have a million sources at the end. Just know that if we, we drill you a little bit on a, on a point that you make, that you know where it's coming from, right? Um, <clears throat> one thing that's generally quite important in the raw materials field is the environmental impact. So that, that angle should have been a little bit more stressed in, in, in the, all the presentations. In some, it was touched upon. In some, it was, it was presented pretty well. In some, there wasn't that much. Um, so that's one thing that maybe, um, you know, could have been stressed better. Um, <clears throat> and my favorite one, market, right? You're very early, I understand that, but you should at least know who your first market is, who are your first customers and why, uh, and what's the you know, total potential if this goes brilliantly and, and uh, suddenly things start growing, you know, what the potential, potential is. We do have also some tiny snippets of, of um, 
feedback for each specific uh, for each individual pitcher. But um, you know, maybe back to you um, if you if you have any more questions for us now at this point. You can you can briefly uh, give these snitches okay. to each of everyone, and then we will conclude this discussion <laughs> with uh, let's say one or two positive things that you saw. Well, there were a lot of positive things. Uh, so you know, we're we're telling now, talking now about the um, about the uh, things where improvements can be made because that's where you can where you can learn. So for our club one, um, we missed the explanation of the problem. Uh, why it's really interesting, you know, it's uh, we made a point, point during the the, the uh, discussion that it's if you're five seconds early, it's fine. If you're thirty seconds early, you could be making one more point, which can reinforce what you're saying already, which is which can be better then. Um, <clears throat> so you know, a bit better explanation of the problem um, because you're all of you. That that also goes for all of you, but maybe here it was it was seen the most. You have. A, a lot more knowledge about your field than than any one of us, right? And then it, that's why it's maybe sometimes you feel it's silly for you to be talking about details or, or generalizations, sorry, not details, generalizations about what, what, what the point of your solution is, but we don't know, right? Um, so that's why um, <clears throat> that would be a point made for, for our club one. Uh, for the soil mining company, uh, better organization would be excellent. Your pitch quality per se was very good, um, but then, you know, some things were maybe missing a little bit and then uh, the timing could have been uh, could, be, could have been better and justifying your facts. I know Nadim that it's not you who are the expert on this. Um, and, um, <clears throat> but also, you know, just say always you, what you can say is, we have this, we will come back to you. Can you give us a contact? And that's how you also start a discussion uh, and turn it to work in your favor. For, for Cast QC, um, <clears throat> maybe a little bit more understanding on how you can upscale this and maybe the financing you need because industrial processes can be very expensive. And also, um, you know, you were mentioning quite a lot of different applications the two starting ones that you mentioned were either nautical industry so for ship hulls and ship uh, hull elements and the other was rv and those are very different applications because the hull of a ship is actual load bearing structure whereas the envelope effectively of an rv is just there for the shape right and you know those are very different applications and if your material can cover both that's fantastic you just need to justify that better um, <clears throat> for GeoBuddy, the presentation um, uh, could have been more engaging, um, but for instance, Sibila, who is a geologist, said that she would love to talk to you about this because uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a, something that she could see herself using because it's a real pain searching for the right kind of tool at the right moment and not losing them after. Um, and the, at least the basics of market size, something we already discussed, would be, would be great just because, you know, we don't know, right? You you know at least a little bit and so just we the basic understanding for us would be would be useful and for the um <clears throat> team behind the rapid acid wound treatment um if you can define your market better that would be um and, and also markets beyond just wound treatment right maybe some problems that we touched upon uh, like the 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 uh, purity of the material you're working with can be less important in other applications and maybe other first applications could therefore be more, more suitable, right? Um, but then overall, I think um, it's very good to see such diverse and still related uh, solutions. I would encourage you, you're in the right kind of place to start, um, you know, seriously moving ahead um, the the uh, grades were were quite close. Um, the decision wasn't uh, wasn't very easy, um, <clears throat> and um, I would encourage all of you. You know, reach out to us. Reach out to me also if you if you feel that I could help you somehow. And I'm sure that goes also for others. That's why EIT Raw Materials exists because it's a network uh, for helping people bring about change in in this field. Um, so yeah, you're in the right place. You're at the beginning. We understand that. And, uh, it's going to be a fun road ahead, right? What Matthias said in the presentation before all of you, uh, he said that, you know, they've gone quite a long way and they're still at the beginning. It's a lot easier, um, if you're going 
uh, if you have help and you're in the right space to get it. Jakob, that was fantastic. Thank you. To all five of you, even if you will take the fourth and the fifth stage today, it was worth being and pitching today because you heard insights directly from the very experienced persons and especially also now from Jakob, who is very, very experienced also in pitching and in all startup ecosystem. Okay, let's stop talking because the heat is really high. Jakob, take the virtual stage now and uh, tell us, please, who is on the podium? Okay, so what we will do is we will um, <clears throat> present the places from third to first. Um, and what I would ask each of you is to do after the... Um, after the, the individual places are, are um, announced to do a virtual clap, which is something that may feel a little bit weird, but it's something that actually sounds quite close to the real thing. So we like doing that. We, we've seen that that actually works. So please, when I'm talking about the, um, uh, when, I'm, when I'm announcing the name and congratulating, unmute yourself and everybody let's give uh, each a hand. So, Without further ado, the third and second place were super tight. Only literally half a point of difference between the third and the second. So starting with the third place, I would like to congratulate Sunchi Tsasukor and her team for uh, rapid acid wound treatment. Please everybody, um, congratulations. Uh, you are in, in third place. Very, very, very close, I said, to second. A lot of advice was given. Would you like to say something? Well, thank you very much. I don't know what to say. I am uh, planning to continue to work on this. And uh, I note your uh, advices. Well, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you. yes, that's the most you can do. You can continue with your innovation. And that's something yes. we love to see. You know, the passion of not just coming and, you know, being good, doing well in a competition, but actually bringing your innovation to the benefit of society. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> so moving on to the second place, uh, we have Mr. Blash Liskovar with Cast QC. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Blash, um, how does it feel? Fine, great, great. But as you say, business is always changing. So. Yes, of course. We was first. Uh, our first idea was the Adria Mobile, so the producers of uh, RVs. But when you talk to the industry, to the let's say final users or final users of your uh, material, that then things change. And of course, now we are more into nautics. And Fantastic. That's, why and that's probably the best advice uh, that that anybody or the best thing that anybody can say. Listen to your customers because yeah, they know. Uh, no. And assumption is absolutely the mother of all fuck-ups, as I said <laughs> earlier. So um, thank you, Blaj. And the person of at the very top today um, is Mr. Damir Gergurash with R Club One. Congratulations. Um, <clears throat> so what do you feel? How do you feel? Thank you. Great. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for for great organization. It was be nice to be part of this, and uh, we are very happy to be first. So, thank you. Well, congratulations to all. Alash, back to you. Thanks, Jakob. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to all uh, three of you. So here we have a virtual podium. Now you can see it. Uh, you are on the first, second, and on the third stage. And yes, with uh, this, we came to the end of today's event. I just have a few uh, words for the end, and I will finish also in English today because uh, it is quite hard to go from Slovenian to English. So as I am in English already, I will finish in English. Uh, maybe I will just share with you one uh, personal thing that happens to me in last weeks. Do you see what I am? I am holding in my hand 
It is a notebook. It is very brand new notebook. I received it today. Uh, it is from EIT Raw Materials. Uh, and uh, this is uh, notebooks in physical state are my newest best friends because months ago I was typing everything in my computer or in my phone but now I am loaded with all these uh, virtual things so yes thank you EIT raw materials for this new notebook as and do you know what is the best thing now when you you are writing in the notebook you have a tasks here and it feels really good to do with a task like this it is physically good because also when you're innovating you need to you need to do your innovation process and uh, put it into the tasks and then do with tasks like tsk, 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 and it will feel good so this is my personal thing to share with you so what we hear today we heard today at this uh, conference was really great. We heard a lot about uh, what EIT raw materials, regional center Adria is working. What are the Slovenian and other uh, persons and companies, startups doing in the field of uh, materials uh, and uh, minerals. And also I squeezed all this in five things that I remembered the most. So I will share this with you. They are really short. The first one, Call the customer, it is just a minute away. So the first. The second one, solve the problem and the pain of the customer. The third one, do not to be afraid to try and fail. The fourth one, quantity or quantify everything. And the fifth, last but not least, use EIT raw materials, either regional center Adria or general EIT raw materials to help you start, grow and scale. It was a pleasure hosting you today. Have a really nice afternoon. And uh, I really, really hope, no, I hope, I believe we will meet each other next year, somewhere maybe in sunny Portoroz. Bye.